Hi. In this video, I want to talk about metal forming simulations by Abacus. This is the table of content of this video. First, I talk about the introduction. Then, uh, I want to talk about types of forming process and uh, it is categorized in three parts and then I want to show you some examples of uh, metal forming process that are modeled in Abacus. We can categorize Farming process from three points of view. First, the configuration of the workpiece. Second, time period of the process. And third, level of temperature changes. These three factors affect the way of simulating a metal forming process in Abacus. It means that these three factors affect the appropriate step, appropriate boundary conditions, appropriate element, appropriate uh, modeling strategy, and appropriate techniques um, that must be used in the model. First, I want to talk about the configuration of the workpiece. The workpiece that is going to be formed can be a bulk workpiece or sheet workpiece. About the bulk workpiece, there are a lot of process like ECAP, extrusion, rolling, and press forging process. And about sheet workpiece, there are many processes too, like hydroforming and deep drying process. The configuration of the workpiece affects the appropriate step in abacus. For example, in bulk metal forming simulations, like the forging process, the amount of deformation of the workpiece is too much. It causes convergence problems when using Abacus standard solver, and we are forced to use Abacus explicit solver and use ALE or CEL technique in the simulation. If you do not use these techniques, in your simulation, you will confront with wrong results or errors even when using explicit solver. You know, when a workpiece is deformed, its elements are deformed too. And if the deformation of the elements exceeds a special index after that the obtained results are wrong or the error of the results is considerable and we are forced to use ALE or CL techniques in simulations like press forging. The time period of the process affects the strategy of the modeling. The time period can be short or long. The process that its time period is short is a kind of rapid metal forming process like drop forging and explosive metal forming. 
For example, the warhead of ballistic missiles are formed by explosive metal forming process. If the time period of the process is long, the process will be quasi-static. Like deep drawing, extrusion, rolling, hydroforming, <coughs> and other quasi-static process. The time period of the process affects the appropriate step in abacus. The time period of the step determines the influence level of the kinetic energy or inertial forces in the results. In rapid metal forming process, you must use the steps that account for inertial forces like dynamic explicit step or dynamic implicit step. But if the process is quasi-static, you can use a static general step too, because this step does not account for inertial forces and it does not calculate the mass matrix of elements. Notice that for modeling this process, you can use dynamic explicit step, dynamic implicit step, and a static general step. But for this process, you can just use dynamic explicit step or dynamic implicit step because the static general step does not account for the mass matrix of elements. And the results that are obtained by using this step for modeling rapid metal forming process are completely wrong. Um, the level of temperature changes in the process affects the modeling strategy in Abacus. If the temperature changes is negligible, like cold rolling, deep drying process, you can use a static general step, dynamic implicit step, or dynamic explicit step. Because these steps do not account for temperature changes during the forming process. Notice that you can simulate your problem by the adiabatic assumption. Dynamic implicit step, dynamic explicit step, and static general step can simulate the problem by using adiabatic assumption. But I mean the fully coupled temperature displacement analysis, not adiabatic analysis, because the adiabatic analysis can be used only for rapid metal forming process. Because the assumption of adiabatic means that the temperature change do not have enough time to diffuse in the model and just uh, the rapid metal forming process have this condition. If the temperature changes before or during the process are significant like hot rolling or hot extrusion, you must use coupled temp displacement step or dynamic temp dis explicit step. The coupled temp displacement step is solved by using Abacus standard solver and dynamic temp dis explicit step is solved by using Abacus explicit solver. Just these two steps account for fully coupled behavior between temperature field and mechanical field. 
The previous explanations for choosing the appropriate step are based on the physics of the process and the fundamental limitations of each solver or a step in the abacus. But these are not all of the important factors. The amount of complexity of the contact state can make some limitations in choosing the appropriate step. The other factor is the spend time for completion of the run. For example, in deep drying simulation, you can use a static general or dynamic explicit steps. But if you use a static general step because of the level of nonlinearity of the problem, the simulation time will be several hours in a moderate computer. But if you use dynamic explicit step by using an appropriate amount for mass scaling factor, the simulation time will be less than one hour in the same computer and with the same mesh. This is an important factor. Now I want to show you some examples that are modeled by using Abacus. I have modeled all of these process by using Abacus. This is the deep drying process that is modeled in three dimensional space and uh, I have modeled a quarter of the model and then the symmetry boundary conditions are applied to the model. This is the holder, this is the blank that must be formed. This is the die and this is the punch. The blank is modeled by using conventional shell elements. Other parts are modeled as discrete rigid. Notice that for modeling the rigid parts like punch, holder and die, in this simulation you cannot use analytical rigid because the configuration of these rigid parts are complex for modeling them by using analytical rigid and you must use discrete rigid. Uh, this is the finite element model. You can see the mesh. For obtaining exact solution, I have used small elements for the sheet. And these are the results that are obtained by using dynamic explicit and a static general step. This result is obtained by using dynamic explicit step and this result is obtained by using a static general step. You can see that the contour of the von Mises stress is similar in these results and you can see that the maximum amount of von Mises stress is close to each other in these results. The calculated reaction forces applied on the punch are close together. The blue curve is obtained by using dynamic explicit step and the green curve is obtained by using a static general step. The oscillations in the explicit solution is due to numerical noise. They can be omitted by using the Butterworth filter with appropriate cutoff frequency. You can see the numerical noise here. The results uh, obtained by dynamic explicit step always have this numerical noise. And if you decrease the amount of mass scaling that is used in the simulation, 
the numerical noise will decrease. And this is a model of reverse extrusion process. The punch goes down and the metal goes up from here. Although the ALE technique is used in this simulation, but because of the very large amounts of plastic strains, the equivalent plastic strain, you must use a special pattern of elements for preventing the elements from severe distortions. You can see this special mesh pattern. If you use a conventional mesh pattern and a simple mesh pattern here, you cannot obtain a exact solution and during the simulation, the simulation will uh, confront with errors. The error will be about the deformation speed or the error will be about the severe distortions of elements. By using this special pattern, I obtained this solution and this is the model of press forging process. And this is its mesh pattern. This model does not need a, a special mesh pattern. And a simple mesh pattern can be used in this simulation. You can see the obtained results. And this is a hot extrusion process. For solving the contact stresses correctly, a refined mesh is generated here. And this is the contour of von Mises stress. And this is the contour of temperature. The temperature change in the workpiece is due to friction and plastic work. A fraction of the friction and plastic work are converted to heat. The former is converted to surface heat flux and the latter is converted to body heat flux. One of these curves are obtained by using Abacus standard solver and the other one is obtained by using Abacus explicit solver. And you can see that the results are close together. For FEA consultancy, you can contact me by using Telegram or WhatsApp or send emails for me. And these are our services. Thank you so much. Good luck.